It is Friday, June 2nd. Let's talk PlayStation. So, earlier this week, PS4 got firmware 4.70, and as usual, it listed that it was for system improvement of PS4 software, whatever the hell that thing usually says now. They've changed it up over the years. But it actually did have one hidden feature in it, and you can actually, now you can see individual results from uh, matches and tournaments. So there's one little feature. I mean, every so often when they do these firmware updates, they do piecemeal a few features out until they hit a you know huge number and a huge software release but you know there's that if you are interested in using that so this next one we talked about uh just a few episodes ago maybe a month or two ago but we were talking about playstation 3 production and how it looked like uh, shipments were going to be ending in japan or production or what have you of the system well now that is pretty much confirmed so ps3 production in japan is now pretty much over the system so the system launched november 11th 2006 i believe uh so the system was well over 10 years at that point uh, I mean, if you look at the numbers, I mean, Sony was selling, like, only a few hundred systems every week, so I feel like, it, yeah, it was about time there. Um, nothing else in terms of other territories. Um, I think that production did stop, and or shipment stopped in some, you know, smaller territories and countries, third, third world, but um, the slow creep of PS3 hardware is finally coming into a, to an end. And when we get more news about the final, final you know, death of the system will probably have some more reverence and remembrance of it in some sort of video. So this one's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around this past week. Uh, it looks like they're pretty solid rumors that there's going to be a gold one terabyte PlayStation 4 Slim coming out very soon. The rumors are pointing to June 9th is going to be the release of the system. There's a few pictures out already, so it looks like this is likely not a rumor and this will probably be a real thing. The funny thing is whenever something like this happens, it's almost always true. Whether it's pictures or video or footage online of like system and it and PlayStation systems, they always turn out to be true, whereas rumors about Sony's games can sometimes be heavily hit or miss. But we are looking at a 250 price tag for the system in America, which would make a lot of people say, oh, maybe that's a price cut, but I would assume that's just, you know, retail incentive price cut MSRP. Or whatever. You know, Sony does that a lot. It's not an official MSRP cut down to 250 but um, often it's been down to 250 before. So if you were looking at getting a gold PS4, this would be your time to get it. Um, unsurprisingly, a lot of people think it looks tacky. I don't know. I guess I'm one of the weird people that thinks it kind of looks cool. Although I'm not really in a position to have a fifth PlayStation 4. Although I would have a fifth one if I was able to get my hands on that 20th anniversary edition PS4. You remember that thing? That thing looked awesome. Wasn't able to get my hands on it. All right, but anyway, our next news story. So Vicarious Visions, the developer for, um, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy, is pretty much not ruling out a Crash Team Racing remaster as well. They, they're, they're pretty much enjoying the fact that they're doing Crash Bandicoot right now. They would love to do more of it, and they're not ruling anything out. And the op So the optimism is always there. What that tells me is that um, this kind of gives um, sort of credence to the fact that Activision as the publisher is kind of watching the, the Insane Trilogy very carefully and, and hoping that the numbers are, are, are doing well. Because you got to figure that Activision is feeding some information to developer vicarious visions and letting them know about what might happen in the future as the game as they wrap up you know finishing the insane trilogy so that looks like um that is definitely something that is on the table for them which is great because i would love to see that too i haven't played that game in a very very long time and they've done a great job on the insane trilogy so far as well i mean the game's not out yet but from all the footage we've seen, I mean, it's, it's, it looks great, and I've played it myself. It feels great, so I would love for them to do more, not only for that, but um, anything else. Like we had just recently mentioned, uh, like Spyro, for example. I, I would love them to do Spyro first, actually, before um, Crash Team Racing, but I'm sure there's a lot of things that they're discussing right now. So for our final news story, this one was um, very interesting. This was from Polygon. Uh, they were talking to Sean Layden, who is currently... Um, Sony Computer, Sony Interactive Entertainment, I still want to say Sony Computer, Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO for America, uh, Sean Layden. They talked uh, to him a lot about, you know, sort of his years with the company and, and whatnot. And one particular thing stuck out to me, which was the PSN hack of 2011. Now, if you remember this, we all know that PSN was down for about 40 some odd days. There was a big um, breach in PlayStation Network. Um, personal information was taken off of the servers and whatnot. So Sony was down for a very long time rebuilding their database and making sure it was all well and good. Now, if you didn't know this already, Sean Layden took over this role in 2014 to be Sony Interactive Entertainment for America. But before that, he was um, Sony Computer Entertainment president of um, Sony Network Services, Sony Entertainment Online Services. So he was pretty much at the forefront of this. And he had an interesting quote I'd like to share with you all about it. He, Regarding the situation, he said, It took years off my life. I remember the day. If it had happened to us, I'm glad it happened then. We've learned so much from that experience. We were in, a good, we were in as good of a position as we could be at the time with what was, at the time, state-of-the-art. 
but we did get hit and we have taken our capabilities in that area to the highest degree possible. So no one is complacent or ignorant about the dangers and the challenges that are out there, but I think that we are in a much better place today. We have had our baptism by fire. Something to immediately note is the guy has a pretty good way with PR words that doesn't really tell us a whole lot about what happened. But he, I think he summed it up very perfectly with, perfectly with that last line. We had our baptism in fire, implying that um, the sort of thing that we learned from it is that we learned the, the hard way. Because it cost the company millions and millions of dollars. Um, and it had a severe impact on the software that they, re they released at the time as well. I mean, SOCOM... SOCOM 4, I think, is when that game is when the game came out, right around that time. So that was crippling that game's performance. I mean, I, but obviously the, the whole overarching idea that PlayStation Network was down for that long is not very good. Um, that was some of the worst um, PR that the Sony that the company had to deal with since initially 2006, when Sony launched the PlayStation 3, and they were trying to make that thing not look as terrible as it was at the time. And so you always kind of, the thing is, you, when we look back to 2014, when Sean Layden took over and we kind of thought to ourselves, who the hell is this guy? Because at the time, Jack Trenton was a very liked individual. I mean, people loved Jack Trenton on E3 stages, um, talking about PlayStation and giving those announcements and everything. He was very charismatic. He was, he was good at it and he was likable. So to have Sean Layden come in and being this new face that not a lot of gamers knew about was a bit unsettling for a lot of people. Uh, and now it's, it's. To go to this um, Polygon article, which it's a good article, it goes very deep into like sort of Sean's history and how long he's been with the company and how he got a start. Um, he's actually been uh, at the head of Sony London and then the head of um, or uh, the head in London, and then he was the uh, head in Japan for a while, and then he came back to uh, network services and ultimately to take the position that he has today. So you know, Sean's got the experience, and um, I think over the th over time already that he has kind of proven himself as a well-liked individual initially people like initially i the first uh e3 he did he was like oh dude this is and people didn't really like him and he even says that too he's like he knew going into that position that he was gonna have to be the person delivering like uh press conferences and things so he wasn't like kind of okay with that and now he feels weird that people recognize him um because that's got to be something weird to be recognized for hey you're hey you're you're the sony interactive entertainment president and ceo of north america aren't you yes yes i am those are just some of the news stories that I wanted to talk about with you guys this week. Um, so, uh, a little snag, uh, some stuff going on, personal life, can't really talk about it, kind of, um, how do you, how do you phrase it? Rocky right now, so maybe not gonna have a Wednesday video next, this coming week, probably the week after, or the week after that. I'm sorry, but it's just, uh, personal stuff that's not very good right now. I'll be honest with you people. Uh, but we will be back on it very short, very, very soon shortly, and Katamari's still going, and we won't stop LTPS or anything like that, obviously, as usual. Those I haven't stopped. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you guys next Friday.